Welcome back to Carnades.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series, Dumbfounding Definitions, Dizzying Distinctions, and Diabolical Doctrines, a series sorting through some of the jargon of philosophy. In this video, we're going to be looking at what is Leibniz's law, the identity of indiscernibles. Now, Leibniz's law, also reference, referred to as the identity of indiscernibles, is fairly simple to formulate. If two objects are indiscernible, in other words, they have all the same properties, then they are identical. They are, in fact, the same object. This is not the trivial type identity, i.e. that they are the same type of object, but rather a token identity that they are one in the same thing. Check out my video on type versus token identity for more. This intuitively makes sense for most common objects, as they generally have sufficient differences to allow to always be indiscernible only if they are identical to each other. However, the law is claimed to apply to all objects, even those in possible worlds. So the more types of properties that are included in this list of what we can use, the less controversial the law is. If all properties are included, the law is fairly trivial because we can have things like location, time of creation, location of creation, and so on of an individual object that make it very, very hard for two objects that are actually distinct to have the same properties in all possible senses. But if we exclude some properties, this becomes much more controversial. If all properties are included, we can include impure extrinsic properties, such as exact distances from specific objects. Since it's rare for different objects to have all the same properties and exist in exactly the same location, this law is fairly uncontroversial. Check out our videos on pure versus impure properties and intrinsic versus extrinsic properties for more information. If we restrict this law, however, to only pure properties, it becomes more than merely a trivial statement. In other words, two objects are the same object if they share all pure properties. We might imagine a universe with two identical iron spheres, three meters apart, without impure properties that let us refer to one sphere or the other, there's no pure property held by one object, but not the other. They're each three meters away from the other sphere. And they have exactly the same properties in every other respect. Without an impure property to refer to sphere A or sphere B, we're forced to say that they share all properties and therefore by Leibniz's law are in fact the same object. If we were to count the number of spheres in this universe, we would say there's only one in both a type and a token sense, which many people find deeply counterintuitive. An even stronger version of Leibniz's law claims that it holds for pure intrinsic properties. In effect, two objects are the same object if they share all of their pure intrinsic properties. This version of the law is open to even more questions. We might imagine a universe with only three identical spheres. Sphere A is six meters away from sphere B and eight meters away from sphere C. Sphere C is 10 meters away from sphere B. We can individuate all of these spheres using pure extrinsic properties. So with our former definition of just including pure, we can still individuate three spheres and say there's three spheres in this universe. For example, the property of being six meters away from one sphere and eight meters away from another is had by only one object. However, using only intrinsic pure properties, we are forced to conclude once again, even in this more complex universe, that there is actually really only one object in this universe, despite the appearance that there are three. There is a way that philosophers have to distinguish between such spheres using only intrinsic pure properties, a concept called a hexaity, that we will cover in a future video. So stay tuned. What do you think? Is Leibniz's law convincing? Are objects with all the same properties the same object? Can we restrict this law to only pure or pure and intrinsic properties? 
As a quick note, this is the identity of indiscernibles. You also have another property, which is the indiscernibility of identicals, which is sometimes called Leibniz law or sometimes included in Leibniz's law. We didn't cover it here, but we may cover it in a future video. If you want to know when that video gets published or hear about the video on Hexaides, click that subscribe button, hit the notification bell uh, so that you can hear about future videos we're doing. Watch this video and more here at Carnades.org and stay skeptical, everybody.